hello again everyone welcome to another episode here i am going to continue on the path of creating armored vehicles um the last one i felt really satisfied with the result with so yeah um i'm really feeling the groove with this one so i'm gonna keep going with it so hope you like it i think that uh, the the uh, this workflow, this three-step workflow that I'm showing you here first with this 3D modeling phase and then moving on to um, a rendering phase, an Unreal Engine, and then finally taking it into Photoshop to do the 2D paint over is really something that I'm really, really liking. So I'm going to continue with, I don't know, we'll see how, how many I do, but uh, yeah. Uh, these vehicle designs going through this this workflow um, is yielding some really satisfying res results for me so gonna see how far I can push it yeah so for this one uh, going for another design so what I usually do is I'll take a number like a handful of references from real life uh, to military vehicles uh, I have a ton of them on the side here. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll pick out certain parts that I like and uh, sort of mishmash and kitbash the designs until I get something that I feel really good about. And what's really cool about this um, 3D uh, part of the process here is that it's super iterative. So I can just move these like really primitive boxes around and try things out really quickly without investing too much into it until I come out with a certain silhouette or a certain proportion that, that feels really good. And that's sort of the power, one of the key benefits of, of this workflow here. And uh, for example, like you've, you've probably seen those wheels that I have here. So uh, the cool thing about this workflow as well is that you'll end up building a library of, of assets that you can probably reuse for a bunch of other things in the future, right? So for example, these wheels are something that um, I've used quite a, quite a bit now. So why not use it again, right? And uh, even if it's not the exact same thing that I want for a specific design, um, it's uh, something that I can at least uh, use as a base, as a foundation and um, build on top of. So again, using Maya here, Blender is a very, very good option. One day I will, I promise myself that one day I will learn Blender. I will get good at Blender. But right now, Maya is there. I have a license for it. It's something that I'm super comfortable with. And for the purposes of this video, it definitely does what I need it to do. And Blender will do the exact same thing. Anything. Uh, any of these 3D applications will really do what I'm trying to do here. 3D Max, whatever, right? And uh, this is not very complex modeling whatsoever. This is not meant to be used in real time rendering or, or anything aside from taking a screenshot, a still screenshot and uh, taking it into Photoshop to paint over. So nothing crazy here. Very primitive type modeling. And I certainly don't care about optimization or poly counts or any, any of that crap. This is really just to, to get a certain look, right? Like the artistry of it, as opposed to all these technical sort of things that um, you can really get into. So 
So yeah, the whole the whole purpose of this this stage here. Get a silhouette, get a proportion that feels really good. And then once that's done, take it into a rendering application. In this case, I'm using Unreal Engine 5. You can use Blender. Again, Blender has a great um, lighting capacity from, from what I can see, you know, rendering capabilities as well. But Unreal Engine 5 is also a very good option because its lighting tools are also top notch and it's also got a, um, a library of assets from Megascans which is built built in and I believe it's completely free and there's a ton of assets on, in, in their library that you can use to, to kit bash a bunch of scenes especially if you're building environments but for this purpose, this vehicle design purpose, I'm just simply dropping it in to a scene which already has its default lights set up and I'm just tailoring it to, to suit the needs. So just finding interesting lighting that I can showcase my vehicle design with. And as soon as that's done, again, taking it into Photoshop to to start the real work really this is where the where the work begins and this is really the fun the funnest part of the process here just really getting into the artistic side of things right and for me this is this is why I do this is is for the the artistic artistic part of it and I know that there's a, there's a lot of really technical people out there who get into all the all the shader work and all the all the bells and whistles of the of the software. Like Unreal has a ton of things that you can do um, for real time graphics, for for game development, all that kind of stuff. But for me, it really comes down to to the to the art stuff, right? To the visual result of things. And I know that there's definitely some things, uh, some technical things that that I'll eventually need to learn to, to really push my skill set. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to to coming up with a scene or a, or a design that, that looks good artistically. So as you notice, I, I went back there a little bit to Unreal to to fix the field of view. The initial import that I used, the initial screenshot that I used, was using quite a a wide a wide field of view. It was using a ninety degree field of view, which was the default camera, and it was just a little too too wide. It, was, it gave me quite a a skewed looking shot which i felt was not the best to show off the the design after all this 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 piece here is really showing off the vehicle design so i wanted to give it a uh some ca a camera setting a composition that showed off showed it off in its best light so i went from 90 degree field of view to a 30 degree field of view and a, a much narrower field of view that showed off more of the of the vehicle right it's funny just speaking about it you know um, me talking about not getting into technical things and uh now and after that talking about field of view and camera settings you know again it's like sometimes you got to get in there in terms of the technical things but at the end of the day it should serve the the look right? the artistry of what you're trying to do 
I mean, unless you're a programmer or you're a technical artist or anything like that, right? But if you're an artist, the job should be coming up with, with a result that looks pleasing and aesthetically pleasing. And so here trying to add some design to the to the hood section here and uh yeah struggling a little bit with it trying to find something that works um and then i decided to add this sort of element that that pops up from the hood to kind of break up the silhouette a little bit and yeah something that i i felt pretty good with And one of the cool things about this this 3D to 2D workflow is that it kind of gives you parameters, like a box to play with. And then once you have established that box, you can sort of figure out the, the rules that you've set for yourself. And then you can sort of play within it, right? You can add things within the rules that you've set. So for example, you know, that initial render had, had uh, the, uh, the values. So the lighting, all that stuff has given you the, the value range of the, of the design, right? So then that kind of gives you the, the values that you can play with. So you can add different components that weren't there originally in the 3D model. But since you have the value structure, you know, the midtones, the shadows, the highlights, you can use that information to, to expand and extend the design, right? And add components that weren't there to begin with. And I find that that's actually really, really fun. Now adding a little bit more color to the top there. Also trying to go for not just hue variation, but also going for something that's a little bit higher in value to add a little bit more contrast to the, to the painting. You know, here adding some details to the windshield, which is made of glass, which I, I find it's actually a little bit of a, a tricky thing to do is, is figuring out a look for, for glass, something reflective. But I, I think I ended up with something that, that is quite satisfactory here after playing a little bit here. I think I ended up with something that I that I feel quite pleased with. It's really using a combination of um, hard brushes with very dark values and then coming in there with soft brushes to act as a gradient. You know, again, adding some components that weren't there to begin with. But since I know the rules, since I know the darkest of the dark and the lightest of the light, I can use that sort of uh, the rule set to to expand the design. And one of the things to remember when going from a 3D screenshot to a 2D paint over using this workflow is that you kind of want to get rid of your tracks as much as possible, so to speak. 
so at the end of the day you kind of want this feel to want this design to feel like a painting right so you kind of want to hide the fact that it's 3d at least that was my intention for this and uh personally i think that adds a lot more character right like personally for me my my taste is is i i, I much rather have something that is a little bit more loose and a little bit more painterly i guess because i think that just again going back to the artistry thing i think it's there's something to be said about something not being so perfect whereas 3d tends to look very perfect and and it looks very computer generated right because that's what it is right it's the software trying to kind of give you its calculations visually so part of my job here going from 3d to 2d is sort of removing those computerized aspects so for example like the hard edges that the 3d render will give you those are things that i want to go in and 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 break down into something more organic right so all throughout this image i go into the to the hard edges of the original render and i go in and soften them up and i go in with a brush and and kind of scuff up the the corners a little bit and the edges and i think that it uh it really gives the the image a lot more character like for example the shadows that are super razor sharp i'm gonna go in there and and uh, soften up a bit or the texture brush and speaking of computer generated images you know now there's this uh this whole sort of trend with with AI right artificial intelligence and how it can generate such mind-blowing art pieces right and uh, yeah it's gonna be interesting where that goes but you know I don't think it'll ever really stop me from from drawing or, or painting because there's just there's just so much joy in it for me And although it might be something that I, I use to some capacity, um, I don't think I'll ever really stop drawing or painting. It's just one of those things that, that feels too good. Anyway, I think that's something that, that we can definitely go into deeper a lot more. We can spend hours talking about AI and its implications on, on artistry. You know, now here I'm really coming up with a result that I'm really starting to like in terms of the color palette, color scheme, and the overall design. I'm starting to to feel something good about, and now I just want to drive it home. Yeah, the last couple pieces I've done uh, with these vehicle design workflows, I think it's definitely something that I want to build on for the next little bit. So the next video, I think I'll do another one of these with the same workflow. And, and again, I'll see how far I get with it. See if I can, like, I, I feel like right now I've come up with a, a workflow and a set of techniques that 
I'm feeling quite, um, I'm starting to feel quite confident with, I suppose, but not quite to the point where I have full control of it. And so I want to do a couple more to, to really f feel like I have a good grasp, kind of like riding a, a horse and I suppose it's kind of like taming it, right? I don't feel I've quite tamed it yet. So I want to take a couple more rides and, and make sure that I've got it under, under control. And what's really cool is that the, the previous videos that I've done, um, that, you know, look like they have nothing to do with this. The, um, the, the portrait, the portrait paintings, the grayscale, um, uh, face paintings character paintings uh, I think they definitely help with this as well just in terms of like breaking down the the values and sort of thinking about values in a, in a structured way I think it's definitely applicable in, in any type of, of painting But here now just finishing up the wheels here again going back in there and, and breaking down the the 3dness the artificial sort of look of the sharp edges and it really really adds a lot in my opinion just softening up those really sharp corners sharp edges And then finally, you'll see me go into the, the shadow underneath and really soften it up. All right, and that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Hope you liked it. Hope you picked up a couple things. Hope you learned something. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.